Hi I'm Doe and welcome to Money Tree, your channel all about money, making money, mindset, and wealth building. Every one of us knows the seven deadly sins that prevent us from living a good life. But what do they mean for our financial success and business? Basically, is money just a multiplier of means for a purpose? Money takes what we already have inside of us and multiplies it. This is exactly why it is so important that children, no matter what age, and young adults develop healthy character traits and also a deep sense of integrity before they become wealthy. The pursuit of happiness and wealth teaches us many important lessons along the way that should prepare us to deal with wealth. In some cases we learn that money is the means to an end to get what we want, on the other hand we can learn that money is a means to share what we have become. But now let us come to the seven deadly sins. Greed. The pursuit and accumulation of excessive possessions, status, and money. The greedy person takes advantage of others without regard for others for personal gain. Greed can express itself in different behaviors such as excessive gambling, conniving, embezzlement, selfishness, unlawful and unethical behavior, being too possessive, etc. Do not be greedy for more and more, it is better to enjoy and grow in the way and in the pursuit and find a way with which you can share the fruits of your labor, your success with others. Create a foundation or create social projects with 10% of your income or even more if you want and be generous with the distribution, because there is no better drug, nothing more intoxicating than the feeling of happiness you get when you help others and above all do not ask or expect anything in return. Second sin is lust. Lust is the pursuit of material or monetary satisfaction to fill the void in our lives. This is nothing more than a driving and gnawing desire for personal cravings for more net worth, greater returns, or profits. Instead of craving for more and more money, we should direct our focus on something else very important, to learn. Every successful person faces at least one hill of failures. When we try something new and fail, we learn how not to do it, we make changes, we improve and the experience of failure we file away in our wisdom. As one increases one's net worth of wisdom and learns from them, we will receive other rewards as well. If you like the video so far, please subscribe to the channel, this will help us make more interesting videos for you and improve ourselves. Now we continue with the video. Sloth Sloth is the refusal to apply our skills and talents to our financial growth. Out of laziness or unwillingness, we do not pay attention to our needs and those of others, especially those who rely on us. Laziness can manifest in neglecting friends and family, avoiding open conflicts, hanging out in our daydreams, etc. As a link between the current version of ourselves and the version we know we can be, there is only one thing. Discipline. To prove to yourself that you are responsible, goal-oriented and disciplined, set a simple financial goal. As the saying goes, a new habit can be established in 30 days. If you can do it with one, try another. The next financial deadly sin is gluttony. Gluttony is the search for happiness, pleasure, and security in a pathological cycle of making and spending money. Just like drugs and alcohol, it can be addictive and can also cause you to start believing that it's in you, and it's a part of you, and you hide behind phrases like, I earned that. Gluttony can manifest itself in many ways, in that we neglect ourselves, we act superior to others, you stop asking for advice, you become rigid, intolerant, and unrealistic. A very beautiful phrase is, Raise your standard of giving, not just your standard of living. In order to maintain the balance when our standard of living increases, it is also a possibility to give and share more. Of course you can buy a nice car or even a house, but you can also help other people who are not as lucky as you are. Generosity keeps one from destroying oneself by striving for more and keeps us grounded. The next of the seven sins I want to talk about is pride. I am the center of the universe, the world revolves around me you all owe me something because I put up with them. Pride has strange expressions such as being ungrateful to others, being territorial, pretending to be better than others, being hypocritical, denying one's own problems, trivializing, or rationalizing, refusing to take responsibility for one's own actions, and others. Instead of falling prey to the negative excesses of pride, give credit where credit is due. Honor others, praise them, Thank your parents, teachers, mentors, and others who have helped you celebrate the success you now have. The interesting thing is, the more we appreciate those we care about, are grateful to them and show it and show them our love, the more likely they are to continue to support you. A classic win-win situation, while the alternative can be lonely, even at the top, another deadly financial sin is envy. 
While we focus on the circumstances of others, we are completely dissatisfied with our own lives and we doubt our own talents and gifts. This sin is not difficult to understand, because we live in a world dominated by social media, which presents us with a world where everything is almost perfect. Envy has its root in jealousy, jealousy of the seemingly successful as well as the truly successful people we see there every day. This jealousy leads to rivalry and unnecessary competition further it can lead to bullying and contempt to destroy others. All that wasted energy that could be spent on things like making friends with successful people and learning from them and gaining other, deeper insights into life, chances are you will make better financial decisions for example. I think if you take the statement that you are the average of those you surround yourself with it is the better choice to surround yourself with successful people rather than those who just drag you down. Let us come to the last of the seven deadly sins. Anger. Anger is a type of rebellion, revenge, or retaliation in which one causes harm to oneself or another, in our context in the form of financial loss. Anger blames others for our shortcomings, bad decisions, failures, and mistakes. This anger can lead to becoming cynical, ruining one's reputation, starting rumors, and possibly hurting other people verbally or physically. Anger refuses to forgive oneself, instead, one clings to bitterness and victimhood. This behavior often leads to life teaching us expensive lessons. When we are angry, we are caught in the web of our emotions and we no longer look at things objectively. Financial decisions made out of anger rarely lead to satisfactory results and often destroy the overall outcome. When you reach this point, you should take time out and find yourself again. How can we prepare ourselves to face and combat these seven sins? We should combine our qualitative qualities, life experience, and accumulated wisdom with our quantitative personal finances. We should start to deal with our values, life goals, and dreams, develop a financial master plan. This plan, we bring in line with what we want to achieve and then execute this plan with discipline and long-term, holistic attention. We must strive not to allow outside influences to penetrate our protective mechanisms and we must remain true to what we hold dear, our family and our businesses. We work together with them and must trust each other to tell the truth when our feelings cause us to falter. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it leave a like and a subscription. See you next.